Now let's talk about space, the final frontier. Turns out the race to conquer that frontier is heating up. Over the last week, we've seen a flurry of space-related activity. Let's start with India. The Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, has launched a satellite today. The GSLV F-12 rocket successfully took to the skies. It took off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The rocket carried the NVS-01 Next Generation Navigation Satellite into orbit. The satellite has both civilian and military applications. It helps with navigation, positioning and timing services. It even carries an indigenous atomic clock for precise timekeeping. Some other big news greeted Indian space enthusiasts as well. ISRO's chief confirmed that the Chandrayaan-3 lunar exploration mission will launch this July. The planned date is July 12th. If successful, it will expand India's footprint on the moon and certify India's growing space credentials. Of course, India isn't the only nation looking to the stars. South Korea launched its first homegrown commercial-grade rocket last Thursday. It ejected several satellites to observe cosmic radiation. On Friday, NASA launched a pair of its Tropic Storm research satellites. Russia launched a Soyuz rocket carrying a Condor Recognizance satellite on Saturday. And even China had some big space news to share today. The General Command has studied and decided to target the launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned spacecraft at 9.31 Beijing time on May 30th. The flight crew consists of astronauts Jing Haipeng, Zhu Yangchu and Gui Haichao. Jing Haipeng served as the commander. Of particular interest is the third astronaut. Payload expert Gui Haichao is a professor at Beihang University. He is mainly responsible for the on-orbit operation of space science experimental payloads. He received professional training in fields such as science and aerospace engineering and has rich operational experience. This is the first time China is sending a civilian into space. Every other Chinese astronaut has been a member of the People's Liberation Army. This marks a new stage in Chinese space activities. And that's not all. Recently, the lunar landing phase of China's manned lunar exploration project has been launched and implemented. The overall goal is to achieve the first Chinese landing on the moon by 2030, conduct lunar scientific research and related technical experiments, and master key technologies such as Earth-to-Moon round-trip, short-term lunar surface stay and human-machine joint exploration and complete multiple tasks such as landing, patrol, mining, research and return. Yes, China is also ramping up its lunar mission. It reiterated its goal of sending people to the moon by 2030. We had told you about Beijing's lunar plans a few days ago and about how the US is wary of China's growing space capabilities. That was on full display over the weekend. Brigadier General Jesse Morehouse of the US Space Command made a statement and I quote, the United States of America is ready to fight tonight in space if we have to. Morehouse cited Russia's aggression and China's vision to become a dominant space power as the reason. He said it left the US with no choice but to prepare for orbital skirmishes. And what is the US doing to prepare? Developing anti-satellite technologies. Think about all the satellite launches over the last week we mentioned. They show how essential satellites are to our day-to-day -day lives. And countries know this. They know that enemy nations can be crippled by taking out their satellites. Russia and China are building spacecraft capable of anti-satellite operations. Russia, China, the US and India have tested ground-based anti-satellite missiles. It's a new avenue for war and countries are getting ready. Add this to the rapid rocket launches and we are seeing a new competition emerge. A new scramble for the moon, a new space race and this time, India is right there among the competitors.